I'm going to go through the process of promoting a secondary domain controller to an existing Active Directory domain. So far, the only thing I've done is installed the operating system, gave the computer a name and a IP address. Uh, the first thing you want to do is just make sure that you can actually communicate with the existing domain, uh, which I can. So to start, if you go to Manage, Add Roles and Features, and then select Role-based or Feature-based installation. Make sure you're on the server you want to install the, uh, the role to. Under Roles, you just want to make sure that the Active Directory domain services is ticked as well as the management tools, as well as DNS server. For the features, you just want to make sure the group policy management is ticked. And then just press yes to the Active Directory domain services information, as well as the DNS information. And then this is just an overview of the roles and features that are going to be installed. Just click install. This can take a few minutes to actually install the relevant parts. Now that the installation is finished, we can either click promote the server to a domain controller, or if you close, you can go to the notification window at the top and promote the server to a domain controller. In the deployment configuration window, uh, there are a couple of options. You can add a domain controller to an existing domain, add a new domain to an existing forest, or add a new domain. In this instance, we're adding a domain controller to an existing domain. So what you want to do is, uh, to specify the domain, is just type in whatever your uh, domain name is, and then press select. So what you want to do is uh, add the credentials for the domain. And then select the domain. If you get an error to say the credentials are incorrect, just close the window and then press change here and type in the new credentials or the correct credentials. So select the domain, press OK, and then press next. In this part, you can set if you want it to be a read-only domain controller or a standard full domain controller. Set the site. I've just got the one, the default first site. But if you've got multiple sites, select the correct site for uh, that the domain controller is in. And then set a DSRM password. Uh, this will be needed if you ever need to restore the domain controller using the directory services restore mode. Uh, this can be changed at a later date. For the DNS options, nothing can be changed here, just hit next. So on this page, you can select the domain controller that you want to replicate from. You can leave it as any or uh, manually specify one of the domain controls. I've only got one, so I'll just leave it as any. For this part, you can specify where you want to store the database log files and sysfile folders. I'm just going to leave these as default as they can be moved later. Uh, on here, you can just review uh, the settings that you selected. You can also view the script, as, uh, say a PowerShell script, of the configuration you've uh, input. Uh, that's fine on me, so I'm just going to press Next. What this will do is this will just run through a prerequisite check and just make sure that uh, everything is OK. As you can see, no errors uh, or prerequis prerequisite checks passed successfully. So I'm just going to install. During the installation, uh, this can take a while. It will just um, promote it to a domain, synchronize and replicate all of the settings and configuration, and it will reboot a few times. Now that the server's booted, after a couple of reboots, we need to log in. Remember, we're no longer using the local administrator account on the server. This is now the domain account uh, we're going to log in with. I'm just going to log in with the domain administrator.
Now that the server is booted, there are a couple of uh, settings uh, we can check. So if we go up to tools, uh, we can open Active Directory Users and Computers, and we can just make sure that it's pulled down Active Directory and synchronized it correctly. So if we just expand the domain, we should be able to see that the existing DC01, as well as the new server we've just promoted, and it uh, should pull down the users and groups. Uh, if you right click on the domain, you can, you can change domain controller, just make sure that both shown is online. Uh, we can also check uh, group policy, just to make sure it's pulled through the relevant policies that have been configured on the domain. This is a clean domain that doesn't have any other than the default, so I'll just make sure it's pulled them through. It's got the default policy. Uh, so a couple more things you want to check is make sure that the IP address and the DNS, so just make sure it's still got the uh, static IP address as well as the DNS server. So what you'll want is to point it to a different domain set, um, domain controller as the preferred DNS and then point it to itself as a secondary. That's just the best practice to have it pointing somewhere else and then at itself. So that's, um, that's all you need to do on the newly promoted domain controller. Now there are a couple of configurations options on the existing domain controller. So if you've only got one, I've just logged on to DC01. So what we'll want to do is, if we open up the network card, what we can do is, instead of having it pointing to itself first, we can point it to the other domain controller and then point it to itself. Okay. So now uh, this server will uh, look at the other domain controller for its DNS first and then it itself. And then one last thing is if you have got uh, DHCP, you can add the newly promoted. Um, domain controller to the DNS settings that get uh, pushed out when a client requests a DNS IP address, sorry, a DHCP IP address. So if we go to the scope, and then the scope options, DNS servers, so by default, the, so the configuration it's currently got is just itself. So I'm just going to give it the new server, and then press add. And then apply. So now any clients that request a IP address will get both domain controllers for their DNS, just to increase the resiliency. And that's all that's needed. To, uh, that's all you need to do to promote a secondary domain controller.